much for coming tonight to the uh, Best and Ferris for the AFLW uh, Geelong Cats season. To get us uh, moving and in the mood, could you just take a look up at your screens uh, and check out this video, please? Hey, you guys. How good is footy? How good is footy? Tell me our style of game. Taking territory. Can we go fast? Yes. I'm encouraging you to go fast. You train to go fast. Take that ball and you go. And Morrison tucks it under the arm. And she's got a bit of space now, Donald. Here's Georgie Prisbarkas breaking through on her right. That's the new edge. That's the new us. Are you up for the challenge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you up for the challenge? Oh, yeah! Benefit from behind, perfectly executed, and the cats are within a kick. Did she lock up? Dave. And she clocks it to Meth Williams, who's gone for a piss. One's going to go right to the line and it's through. Still a ball to be won here. Stolen by Maloney, who runs into an open goal. Can I say I'm proud? Proud, first and foremost, of this group. This is the tie group. This is the first step of our journey. <laughs> Yeah, a, a terrific start and well done to everyone who uh, put in to cutting that together. Welcome everyone to the Geelong Cats AFLW Best and Fairest. Uh, tonight is sponsored by Blue Rock. Uh, I'd like to start by saying we are Geelong. We come from Cadinia Park and today we acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Wadawurrung people. We are one people united in our love of the game of Aussie rules we recognise and value all cultural backgrounds, but we especially appreciate the special place and connection that Aboriginal people have in the history of our nation and the creation of our great game of Aussie rules. We recognise their ongoing contribution and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Uh, before we get into the, uh, the formalities, we'd like to thank and welcome uh, the CATS president, Craig Drummond, CEO Steve Hawking, CATS uh, directors and their guests and the executive, also uh, former president Colin Carter, welcome Colin and his wife Angie, we'll hear more from them soon about uh, one of the great contributions that they're making to the club. To all the player sponsors, uh, we acknowledge and thank all of our partners, also uh, Kerr Lewis Golf Club, our major partners Ford and Deakin, our premier partner Blue Rock, uh, and our elite partners, Geelong Dairy and Viva Energy, our associate partners, Cool to Legal, Coca-Cola, Cotton On, Lake Imaging, Bioconcepts, Barwon Water. Thanks again to uh, Kerr Lewis Golf Club and also to Blue Rock. So Blue Rock helps people to operate and grow successful businesses and achieve their personal goals. Formed more than 10 years ago, Blue Rock has grown to become an exciting and successful entrepreneurial co community with expertise across accounting, law, finance, wealth, bookkeeping, digital and insurance, just to name a few. So big thank you uh, to Blue Rock. As always tonight, there will be a raffle and of course the funds go to a very, very good cause. So keep an eye out uh, for the staff uh, coming around with the raffle tickets. Um, now we'd like to announce our first speaker of the night and it is the Geelong Cats Vice President, Diana Taylor. Uh, Diana has played a huge role in the overall success of the club, but in particular uh, the way that our women's program has been forged. So would you please welcome the Vice President of the Geelong Cats, Diana Taylor. very much Nathan and good evening everyone. Um, welcome to our best and fairest for 2022. It's wonderful to have you all here with us. Um, it's my great honour tonight on behalf of the, the club, um, our Craig Drummond, Steve Hocking and our board 
and club to uh, present the club address. And we are here tonight to um, celebrate moments of brilliance. Um, we're here to celebrate um, individuals, but we're also here to celebrate our entire team, um, our family members, um, our partners, and the contribution that everyone has made um, to our football club and to our AFLW program. So I also wanted to um, welcome Colin and Andy Carter. Wonderful to have you both um, with us. Colin, our, our former president of, of 10 years, one premiership in there, Cole, but boy, it was good, wasn't it, 2011. Um, our GM of football, Simon Lloyd, uh, head of our AFLW and Pathways, Brett Johnson, our senior coach, Dan Lowther, and all of our coaching, performance, medical, commercial, media and events team, and everyone else behind the scenes playing a role in our women's program. I also wanted to um, uh, give a special hello and, and just um, our thanks um, to our magnificent player leadership group. Um, newly formed, formed in a different way um, this year, and I'm sure we'll hear a bit more about that tonight. Um, but to our inspirational captain, Meg McDonald, our vice captain, Nina Morrison, Georgie Rankin, Julie Crockett Grills, Chantelle Edmondson, and Maddie Kirk, thank you so much for the role that you've played um, in bringing us to the point that we are, and thank you for a magnificent season. I also know that there are many special people in this room um, members, supporters, sponsors, player sponsors. Um, and significant contributors to our foundation. To each and every one of you, thank you for all that you have done and continue to do for our football club and in particular your support of our AFLW program. Um, we know that many of you have been with us for this entire six year journey and continue to stay with us and our AFLW program is the reason why you support the Geelong Cats um, and continue to contribute to what we are doing. Um, so it's just, it's absolutely brilliant and we just, we wanted to thank you all uh, for what you do. I now wanted to um, just turn to a, um, and it feels like it's been a bit of a season where um, social media and Bianca Wallace, I'm looking at you, thank you, you and your, your fabulous team. And of course, all of our players um, have taken social media to a completely different level um, in season 2022. And there was a fantastic um, Instagram message that came through from a supporter, Kath Davis, after our thrilling three-point win over the Eagles in round five. And Kath said, this was a time, we, there was a time, there was a time we loved the team because we were just excited and we had a women's side. Now, we also love you all because you are genuinely bloody awesome people and players. Thank you for a season where we saw growth and you showed a heap of heart. We are so proud you're ours. What a magnificent statement and sentiment on behalf of one of our supporters. And, and that comment really encapsulates the fact that it matters that women are now and will be from this moment forward always going to wear the hoops. We are not the Geelong Football Club without our AFLW team. It matters to our community that we are here, that we are performing and that we are successful. And we will do everything possible to ensure our team and our players and our people are successful and reflect everything that we are at the Geelong Football Club. So as everyone knows, there was a bit of a reset at the end of the uh, 2021 season, uh, two long years of COVID, and I'm sure for family and friends, it seemed like even longer in getting through those two years. Um, but I did want to acknowledge on behalf of the club, the work of Sarah Albin and Brett Johnson, uh, Dan Lowther and his team, again, Meg, the Play Leadership Group, for really assisting us to reset and to all of our staff and the board members who were involved in that to really reset where we were, what we stood for and how we were going to present ourselves forward in the future and that produced the She's Football campaign. And in that campaign you all would have seen very clearly that this was the voice of our players. It was strong, it was ruthless, it was resilient, um, it was about team and it was about unity and it was about who we are but it was also about who we're going to become. And it was a magnificent representation of our football club. Um, and we were just so very proud to launch that at the start of the season. And we cannot wait to see what is ahead. 
Speaking of social media, there are a couple of highlights um, that I also wanted to call out. So Geelong Cats Women, if you're not subscribing to Instagram, you've got to get onto it, you've got to follow it. Close to 20,000 followers we have now. Now, the number one star, the number one star and star recruit um, on that Geelong Cats Women Instagram page um, is Ella. So Kate and Daniel, where are you guys? <laughs> Sorry, where, there they are. Congratulations. Ella was absolutely the star. Um, I, I think just, just owned every shot um, that she absolutely had. And um, it, was a, it was a great representation of family. I know you, you guys have been tremendous support to each other. And Daniel, you've been absolutely magnificent in your support. But Kate, I also wanted to call out on behalf of us. I mean, what you've done this season in coming back after having Ella... Um, having your best season ever, just utterly extraordinary and inspirational um, and it's going to continue to inspire women and girls and everyone um, for time to come. So congratulations to you both. <laughs> now another standout um, of our social media campaign and season this year, Nina's hair. When you now have a national profile for Golden Perm um, and uh, the hair has a personality of itself, um, Nina, we know you can play, but my goodness, congratulations on where you've taken that to and thank you for all the material that you've provided. It's just been absolutely magnificent this season. Um, I've also absolutely loved the Catterboxes podcast. If anyone's not listening to it, you've got to get onto it. So Phoebe, Megan, Georgie and Becky. I felt like I could sit back in my office with a glass of wine uh, at 2 o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon listening to you ladies. Um, very, very insightful as far as what was going on on the field, but also incredibly entertaining. So congratulations for that initiative. Um, and, of course, as far as, um, as, far as uh, uh, um, humorous moments, uh, we did also love the Tacky Tourists that uh, finished our season. That was magnificent. Uh, Julia Crockett Grills was just enjoying far too much her outfit. It looked very well worn. And Jules, I don't think that that was new for the day. So, um, so thank you for that form of entertainment. We've had a lot of success this season. Over 2,000 people have attended our game. Uh, 2,000 people per game um, attended all of our home games. And we've set a new club record for our AFLW club membership, 3,650,000. 3, Three, I wish it was 350,000. 3,650 members, an 87% jump on last year. So just extraordinary and a credit to everyone. Thank you. So we also had two of our players, Georgie Prisparkas and Darcy Maloney, rising star nominees. Amy McDonald and Maddie McMahon, um, McMahon made the All Australian squad. Nine debutantes, we celebrated six players reaching the 25 game milestone and Meg McDonald um, reaching 25 club games with our club, which was just a magnificent effort. Yeah. We also wore the Geelang jumpers in round eight against Richmond and round 10 against the Giants and we hosted our pride match under lights in round three against Collingwood, which was just magnificent. So. It's been a very special year. I know Dan and the team will talk a little bit about the year ahead uh, when they're up here tonight, but um, you know we, we all know, in this room, we all know what's ahead of us. 18 team competition, competitors who are trying to find their next 15% improvement um, on what they're doing uh, when they're out on the field. And high performance is about going into the space that most people fear to tread, but not our players and not our team and not our football club. We're going to be putting ourselves into uncomfortable places to get to the place that we need to get to. It will be done with the entire support of the Geelong Footy Club and that's going to translate into results. Purpose, plan and process are going to, going to get us to where we're going as well as a whole lot of will and pride in our football club. So again, I wanted to thank um, everyone for attending tonight. Um, Welcome uh, again back to the Geelong Footy Club. It's wonderful to see everyone. Um, we also just want to thank again our magnificent players, 
our staff, our coaches, uh, for getting us to the point that we've got ourselves to. We're six years in, we've got a lot to go, um, but we cannot wait for the challenge ahead. So thank you so much, everyone, and have a wonderful evening. Yeah, uh, beautifully done, Diana. Well done, great speech. And uh, I think it's really important to acknowledge not only the current, you know, President Craig and the CEO, but also the, you know, previous President Colin uh, for the way that the women's program has been integrated into the football club and genuinely taken seriously. And I hope and I'm sure that all the uh, women players feel that way, that they are a genuine part of the club. Um, now it's time to hear from our captain, Meg McDonald, who, um, sorry to embarrass you, Meg, but I saw her walking down the street in Geelong West yesterday um, with a laundry basket on her hip because her clothes dryer had broken down. And she'd been at the laundromat, but I'm pretty sure you got it dry, did you? Anyway, whatever you're wearing, I'm sure it looks wonderful. Would you please? <laughs> Sorry to embarrass you, Meg. That was a pretty pointless story, really, but I just happened... <laughs> I just happened to see her yesterday. Um, would you please welcome the captain of the Geelong Cats AFLW team, Meg McDonald. Welcome, Meg. Oh, you, I'm sure you're sorry. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I don't have a clothes dryer, actually, so I, if you'd like to. <laughs> Um, one of the many pleasures of moving to Geelong, which I did um, and should have done sooner, but I was a joy to run into you and I run into many people in this room regularly, so um, if anyone hasn't made the move yet, do it sooner than I did. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, what a pleasure it is to be in all your company. Um, so many new faces and old faces, um, but all sharing a great deal of love and support for our uh, women's program, our footy club, um, and it's wonderful to be here again. Being asked to do a captain's address uh, this evening reminded me of uh, one of the true highlights of the year and one that captures uh, the flavour of the best of us this season. Um, I might have to swear to do this story justice and some of you have heard this before, but I, I thought it worth reiterating. Um, as I assume everyone here knows, uh, it's customary for the captain to address the team immediately before the opening bounce of each game, um, a final pump up. Um, come round eight, I felt or a few of us in the leadership team felt we need some, needed some new voices. Uh, so I asked Neens to speak and, and Jules to speak and I thought, I'll also ask, well, I won't ask, Becky Webster loves a pre-game. <laughs> she loves a pre-game, let's fucking go. <laughs> and um, I was like, she says all the time, I won't word her up, I'll just ask her for three beautiful words before we break and she'll know what to do. Um, so going, it's all going well and um, Neen speaks about what we're going to do. Jules speaks about how we're going to give the oppo a hard time. And I said, Becky, can you give us three beautiful words? And there's like a flash of panic across Becky's face as she doesn't know what I mean. And she just goes, I fucking love you girls. <laughs> I was just like... Um, and... Uh, and you know what? We went out and played arguably the best game of our season and Becky put her hand up for BOG. So um, I really think that moment from Becky and the performance that followed from herself and the team was indicative of a new stage um, for this team. New leadership, new voices, a deepening of the camaraderie and love we have for each other um, and a, a renewed sense of joy and a new ability to back up some of the commitments that we'd made for each other with improved on-field performance. I'm sure that throughout tonight you'll sense that same love um, and a hunger to let's go um, again. That's the last of the swearing. Um, <laughs> with all that we've learned and all the improvements um, we can now clearly see before us. Um, thank you to Diana for your, for your words tonight, to the board, Steve Hocking and the entire executive team for your support this year. Um, having worked, I've worked for a number of years for an organ organisation in the pursuit of gender equality and... I know how critical an organisation's senior leadership is in driving change and I speak for all the players in saying that we felt, incre we felt incredibly supported this year um, and you've prior the way you've prioritised our program and um, it's been wonderful to be a part of and we look forward to the future in that respect. Um, one of the greatest signifiers, and Diana already mentioned it, was the, um, the She Is Football campaign um, driven by Jono's... Where is Jono? 
Jono's passion, Bianca's um, expertise. Um, the club enga engaged uh, local agency Ruck to rebrand the women's team and it's not up at the moment, but it has been up. We've seen all the, the new campaign. The consultation process engaged um, every department in the footy club, but absolutely prioritised the voices and the input of the AFLW players. It was op an opportunity for us to say exactly who we are and what we're aspiring to. Um, the result was a campaign that celebrated our strength, our diversity, our personality, our history and our ambition. It also uncovered voice over artist Nina Morrison. I don't know if the video is playing tonight, but you've got a future there, mate, if this doesn't work out, which I'm sure it will. Um, so thank you to Brett and Bianca and the club for its investment. Um, we look forward to seeing further iterations of the campaign and everything that the campaign inspires in the community. I ended my speech last year by saying uh, that we would get better. And I stand here really confident in the knowledge that we have. But how? Um, how do you measure the sense that we've got among us? Um, I had a conversation with Steve and Joel recently off the back of the work the club's been doing around our values and guiding principles. The conversation was about winning. Um, in football and sport, obviously, there's a universally understood and fairly narrow definition of winning. Um, it's a number of binary. Either you have or you haven't. Um, you are or you aren't. It's a ratio, um, a tally, a measurement. Um, and it can feel like everything or nothing. Um, and it's so easy to think of it so, it's so enticing to think, you know, just next week. But during our conversation, Steve encouraged us to expand our notions of winning, to notice and value smaller and broader and sometimes more profound wins than those dictated by a scoreboard. And by this definition, we had a whole lot more than two. Um, the, this conversation mirrored one that we regularly had in our player leadership meetings throughout the pre-season and season. In the context of so much change, how will we define success? So I thought I'd mention some wins that we had along the way and many that Diana has also mentioned. We created our own, um, we created and owned a clearly identifiable game style centred on grit, pressure, smothering, tackling, intercepting around the contest and recognisable not only to every player but to our supporters as well and people in the room tonight have already spoken to me about it. We ran further and faster than ever before. We were stronger than ever before. Um, we had new additions to our leadership team and the emergence of new leadership within the playing group and more broadly, as per Becky. Um, leadership from our younger generation uh, who are beginning to own the fact that success sort of is in their hands. As part of that shift, uh, Neens was elevated to vice captain. Credit to the investment, drive, passion she has for the footy club. Um, Speaking of Neens and wins, Neens played her first full AFLW season, notwithstanding some COVID protocols and a one-week calf injury. Um, but that's no small win in itself, so congratulations, mate. Uh, we learned we could score quickly um, and win matches in the closing stages. The boldness of Becky Webb, brilliance of Darcy Shark Maloney, where is she? On your Dars. Um, and the pressure acts in between that moment. Um, speaking of, we had a number of rising stars. Prez's incredible debut, Darcy's incredible improvement um, this year. Um, and I encourage everyone to listen to the podcast because Darcy's interview that she gave that um, spoke to that improvement and the work that went into it was really, was really inspiring to those of us in the podcast on the day and those that have listened since. Um, we had two All-Australian squad nominations, AMAC, um, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? AMAC. AMAC. Um, you do what other players can't, mate. Um, we've said we value the contest and your contest work is second to none. Um, my sis Mads, on your Mads. Um, leading intercept defender in the comp and the embodiment of a Dow defender. Um, the level you've maintained um, is unbelievable for the four years and I benefit from it most of all. So congratulations and you know our feelings on your non-selection in the final team. I'm sure plenty more people will tell you about that tonight. Um, we had eight players pulling the herbs for the first time and we had, we had mums and soon-to-be mums exchange playing spots. Not only a credit to Renee and Darbs, but to Brett, Tracy for leading the way and advocating for change in the parental leave policy for the players. So thank you for that. I'm sure many more players will benefit from it in the future. Those are just a few of the wins that come to mind. Um, I trust you'll hear more as the night goes on. All that being said... Um, after none of those wins, you stand around in a circle and sing about the greatest team of all together like lunatics. So I'm looking forward to a few more, few more of those wins along the way as well. All these have, wins are, of course, a credit to 
the staff that support our playing group. Um, starting with Dan, Dan's ability to engage and drive his players has been evident from day one. Um, his communication and coaching is to be credited. Um, yes, for the identifiable game style we've sought to execute, but perhaps more importantly, the spirit with which we seek to execute it when we're at our best. Um, it's the entire SNC team, um, so many of you this year, which is wonderful, led by Anul and Dom, Michael, Katie. You leveraged many a PB, but um, it was the above and beyond care that you showed us that distinguishes you as coaches and we were better, better athletes for it. Uh, the same was, might be said for our medical team. Dr. Tom didn't get a touch this year, but that's probably the only knock on his, on his performance. Um, as in court, another crop of skilled draftees to our program and a credit um, alongside the SNT, SNC team for our healthy list this year. Steph and Ben, with each year that AFLW commitments expand, so do your workloads. You're our go-tos and our first gives, and you know how much we value that in footy, so thank you. Um, Robert and his team, the entire coaching staff, Rachel, Taylor, everyone involved in the program. So much is done out of the goodness of your hearts and we're so lucky that um, your capacity for that goodness is so enormous. My thanks to my fellow, fellow player leaders, um, as well as Renee. Thank you for your support. Uh, the responsibility for this footy team was truly shared and we're so much the better for it this year. And of course, to Brett, um, the task you undertook in initiating this change process can't be overstated, and it was only possible because you possess immense passion for it and the expertise to bring all the moving pieces together. Thank you for the ambitions you have for our team and program. Undoubtedly, you'll continue to hear much tonight, as you have throughout the season, about change, about newness, um, about what's next, especially when what's next is next month rather than next year. Um, and while we all want to hasten the arrival of the, the chance and the opportunity to go again, um, we must remember to take the best of what's come before us with us as we go. Um, Danny Higgins is the embodiment of that spirit. Also, you returned my Liffy just before, thank you. Um, a Geelong person who has been here from the very beginning, a kind-hearted, generous, team-first footballer who has created the love and care that we share today. Um, we'll miss you, mate. You might be the only person who talks more than me. Um, but you've always got the most insightful things to say, so thank you for it. Um, <laughs> now we must take that care, that love and support and go further. Um, use it to challenge each other and challenge ourselves. To recommit and reinvest because we've got so much better to get and so many more wins to achieve of every variety. Um, thank you for all being here. Thank you for your support and have a wonderful night. Yeah, beautifully done, Meg. Well done. And don't you feel uh, comfortable and confident about the future of the women's team when you've got a leader like that? And um, if you just forgive me for ad-libbing for a moment, I reckon when I was a younger sports reporter, I used to think that things like, you know, culture and leadership were sort of overused buzzwords that were a little bit hollow. But having been around... Geelong for a really long time now. I understand what it actually means. You know, uh, Joel, Tom, Paddy, uh, people who have got genuine values, it actually means something because any, anyone who comes into the club understands that this is what we expect and this is how you act. And Meg is a perfect example of setting the example and setting the culture uh, for the women's team as well. So well done, Meg. I know that you didn't have as many wins as you would wanted to, but you were superb again this year. So well done to Meg. <clears throat> and uh, Meg also alluded to uh, Danny Higgins. So we wanted to pay respect to uh, our retiring retiring players and it's very hard to imagine forming the Geelong Cats women's team without Danny Higgins. She was an inaugural member of the VFLW team and then the AFLW team. She played 24 games uh, at the very highest level, kicked six goals, 73 tackles. She was a very good tackler. Uh, a clever small forward with a talent for reading the play uh, she's also played 45 games with the Cats VFLW team. So uh, we're going to take a break, but before we do, could you please take a look up at the screens 
uh, for some highlights of the wonderful career of the very popular Danny Higgins. Okay, everyone, can I have your attention, please? We're going to get on with the, uh, the business end of the night. Shh, 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 shh. Thank you very much. AFLW crowds are far more compliant than uh, AFL crowds, so thank you very much. Um, now, it's easy to forget that this is actually a best and fairest count, so what we're going to do is have a look at the highlights of the first three rounds, rounds one, two and three, and then after this highlights package, uh, we will explain exactly how the vote counts work. But please uh, have a look at the screen and we'll have a look at the highlights from the first three matches of the year. Thank you. Round one. There was plenty to like about a new look cat's outfit, including the return of a cult figure. Geelong threw everything at North Melbourne. After trailing early, the Cats hit the lead in the third, but couldn't hold on, going down by eight points. Footy returned to GMHBA Stadium in round two. As sisters Georgie and Maddie Presparkas went head to head for the first time. Amy McDonald and Becky Webster were powerful presences inside for the Cats, while Rachel Kearns brought the crowd to their feet with her first AFLW goal. She kicked her first goal in AFLW. Absolutely she can. The Cats welcomed another new face to the team, but despite a few moments of brilliance, fell just short. It's Phoebe McWilliams. You wouldn't want it in anyone else's hands. Round three. Pride round arrived and the Cats met the undefeated Pies. The Cats showed their intent early, but couldn't convert their territory dominance on the scoreboard. After conceding the opening goal, the Cats needed a spark and it was van der Heuvel that delivered it, setting up an early goal. In fact, and Jordan Ivey's got her second AFLW goal and it puts the Cats back in front. Collingwood threatened to break the game open, but the Cats never gave up getting within four points in the final term before falling short at the finish. Thank you very much for that, Beck. And now we're going to go to the leaderboard, but just to explain how the votes work. So the senior coach, Dan Lowther, and the three assistants all vote 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So 5 times 4 means that 20 is the most that you can get uh, for one single game. So after round three... It looks like Maddie McMahon's in the lead. 43 out of a possible hmm, 60. That's pretty good. Yeah, well done. Um, what we're going to do now is uh, invite the head of Geelong's AFLW uh, programmer, Brett Johnson. Uh, he's the head of the Football Pathways and Player Development. Would you pre please welcome uh, Brett Johnson? Thanks, Nathan, and thanks, everybody, for joining us here tonight to help us celebrate uh, Season 6 and the program, uh, the progress that we made on and off the field, and also uh, pay tribute to um, really everybody that helped us deliver Season 6, really everyone in this room, you know, whether it's, um, you know, players, staff, family members, uh, sponsors, donors, members, supporters. Um, as head of uh, the AFLW program, um, your support's greatly appreciated, so, so thank you. Um, and it was fantastic to see uh, some of the highlights just now of um, rounds one to three. It, it actually feels like a lifetime ago. Um, and as another season comes to a close with the grand final uh, being played earlier today, um, and particularly I think in a 10-game in a season, and with season seven maybe just around the corner, it can feel like, you know, time's really flying by. Um, so I think tonight's a good opportunity to really pause and, and reflect on, on the progress that we did make this year. 
Um, and as Diana said earlier too, coming out of season five, you know, we were quite um, disappointed, a little bit jolted by our performance, uh, which forced a, a bit of a, a rethink in terms of our, our path and direction and um, resulted in a fair bit of uh, renewal across all areas of our, our program. Um, so for us this year, it was really important that, you know, we embrace new dawns um, and we define success in our own terms, in a, in a process sort of way and not chase outcomes. Um, I think Diane also mentioned um, stories of growth or, or moments of brilliance and, and those were the things that we were really focused on um, as a program and there were, there were so many of those and um, some have been mentioned already and I'm sure you know, everybody in this room can think about some of those um, stories or moments of brilliance um, and, and that may be um, you know, about you know, stories of growth from individuals within the team but also um, from the team itself and one of the things we are really focused on this year was um, addressing certain areas of our, our game style and um, having an identifiable brand and um, I think if the opposition described our, our style of play or even some of the supporters in the room, they'd, they'd say that we're a really contested ball team that, that puts a lot of pressure on the ball, the opposition uh, takes territory and runs end to end for, for four quarters. Um, and so that, that was really pleasing. I think um, something else that, well, with that too, I think we were, we were in a lot of games that we played, I think the average losing margin was, was under 10 points and more often than not, we put ourselves in, in positions to win the game. And I think another area of growth, uh, Meg may have mentioned it as well, was um, you know, we built more discipline around our fitness and improved our running capacity as a team. And I think um, that's something that really characterised our program and, and enabled us to stay in games for longer and really challenge um, teams over the full four quarters. Um, we managed to minimise injuries too. Uh, I think we only had uh, eight games missed due to injury this year. And um, in a season where the competition was, was really savage by injury, um, particularly to some star players, um, and I think, um, you know, you don't want to see that, but certainly going forward with the season, you know, seven just being around the corner, it's going to hold us in good stead. Um, and these are, I guess, just to name a few examples of, and some of those stories of growth. And uh, whilst there are a lot of those stories, we also understand and fully aware that um, it didn't result in more wins, you know. We ended up with, with two wins and, and sometimes, you know, that can be hard when you're, when you're really sort of pounding the stone and putting all the effort in and, and not getting the results. And that external validation and, and motivation that you get from that. Um, and I think it's been good to have a, a bit of space between and distance between now and the end of the season to sort of think rationally about it. And, and even then and now, I still think the overwhelming feeling is that we really improved this year um, and made significant progress. And I think the most important thing is we're on the right path now. Um, we're on the right path and, and developing the, the right mindset and I think standards that are, are going to unlock greater consistency of performance for us. And, um, I've no doubt that's going to help us climb the ladder and that's where we want to be as a, as a footy club. Um, so for this, for this season, it was more about staying the course, um, you know, being patient. We've had to go slow before we can go fast and we've had to spend a bit of time on the, on the plateau just learning a little bit more about ourselves. And, um, you know, off the back of this season, I'm, I'm super confident and optimistic that, um, you know, if we keep embracing the journey and, and path that we're on, that we really stay connected to each other and the club, and keep focusing our attention on the things that matter that help us stay on that path. I think it's going to feel pretty bloody good when we arrive at our destination. And that's not an if, but, um, but when. And I think uh, it's not as far away as uh, what some people think as well. Um, and since the season's finished, I've been really buoyed, um, you know, by the motivation and, and inner drive of the playing group to, to get back to doing the work. There's already a number of players who have been um, rolling through the club looking to get back into it. And I think... You know, um, by doing that, it, it kind of reminds us um, that we love doing the work and, and love trying to master the game of footy a lot more than just being recognised for it. Um, and I think that helps put those external drivers of motivation in their place a little bit as well. Um, look, there's so many people, you know, I'd like to thank and I'm not going to try and individualise tonight. Um, but, you know, to the playing group, um, I, I, I get a bit emotional now, I've just turned 40, I'm not sure what that's about, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, it's, not, it's not lost on me the, the sacrifices that you make to, to play at this level. Um, and I've said, I think I've said it a couple of times this year, I'm really you know, humbled and blessed to be on this, uh, this journey with you. And that, and that goes the same for our AFLW staff as well, who you know, do so much to support um, our players and help them maximise their, their careers in the game. And I've really enjoyed working with you all this year and, and look forward to, to building on what we put in place this season. And to the broader footy club, um, we know that, you know, to be the greatest team of all on the field, 
it takes a whole of footy club approach and it's not just the football program. And there's been an absolute step change in support provided to the program this year. And I know the players have felt that, I've certainly felt it. Um, so the, to the AFLW strategy group, the operations group and everybody from the top down right through the organisation, I want to thank you for your support this year. Um, and I also know that you know, we look forward to being the catalyst in, in season seven as well. Um, my job also tonight is to present the AFLW Fan Most Valuable Player Award. Um, so in 2022, our loyal members were given a chance to vote on their Most Valuable Player, presented by Geelong Dairy. On behalf of the club, I'd like to thank everyone who voted in our end of season poll. And this year's winner was a, a, a breakaway favourite. And the winner of the AFLW Fan Most Valuable Player Award, presented by Geelong Dairy, is Amy McDonald. Congratulations, Amy, on back-to-back -back wins. Congratulations to Amy. Well done and well done to Brett as well. As we said earlier with Meg, it does make you feel confident when you've got people like that in charge uh, of the football program. Um, the next award is the Carter Family Community Champion Award. Of course, you know that uh, Colin was the president for uh, around a decade and his wife Angie has also been a huge contributor to the club. And so they have created this award uh, which rewards someone who has been uh, an outstanding member of the community uh, and getting involved in community-based organisations and programs and campaigns and initiatives. So uh, would you please put your hands together, Colin and Angie, or just Colin? Come on, Angie, come on, come on. Come on. All right, well, <laughs> please welcome our uh, former president, Colin Carter. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, Angie and I and our whole family have really appreciated the opportunity to be involved in this award and we particularly are grateful for the work that our club does in the community. Um, I've always felt that this side of our club is really important. Um, our club reputation, for example, is enhanced by the work that our people do in the community and I think you can readily understand that if the community at large, even those people who don't follow Geelong, feel that our club is a useful and important contributor to the community, that helps to underwrite our club's future. Um, uh, for example, it's pretty hard to justify public expenditure in our stadium um, if the club wasn't well regarded for its contribution in the community. And I think equally important, these sort of things make us all better people. Being engaged with the wider community and particularly with people who, are, who have needs, helps to keep us grounded. And being grounded and being aware of the needs of others is actually a pretty good asset to have in a team-based sport. Uh, those are strengths and, 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 and attributes which help us to be better actually on the field as well. Now each year the club identifies one of our players that has gone the extra mile and that person's known as our club's community champion and this year I have great pleasure in Georgie Rankin is our club's community champion. to go into all of the detail of what Georgie does, but she's very actively involved in our club's inclusion and diversity programs, programs like Welcome to Geelong, which are welcoming people from different backgrounds. She's been an ambassador of our sensory zone. She's been involved in our All Abilities Clinic, which helps people who have different abilities to make this a game for them as well. She's helped to deliver our GMHBA Healthy Heroes program. 
She was our club's nominee to the AFL's Jim Steins Community Leadership Program and was named as a finalist. And Georgie overall is known as a very generous, inclusive and kind person and no one was surprised at all when this year she was appointed to our AFLW Player Leadership Group. Georgie is a very deserving winner of this award and our football club is very proud of her. And I remind you that the rank and name is very famous in our club's history. Um, Cole Hutchinson tells me that the Rankin family is the first family in the history of the competition where five generations of players are involved. So Georgie, you're in a pretty distinguished line there. So. Um, thank you so much, Colin, and to Angie for this beautiful award. Um, and I also want to thank the Geelong Cats community team and the whole club. I'm not naive to the fact that I'm very fortunate um, to have all of these opportunities because of, of where I am. And, um, and it's a bit interesting to be awarded for it because I just love to do it and I love that the, the people that I cross paths with um, while I do it. And I also just want to say thank you to my beautiful parents for being amazing role models. Something that um, my dad has always said to me is, your energy introduces you, and it's something that um, came from the great Jakey Ryan, who sadly passed away a couple of years ago, but um, I try and take that forward into every person that I meet and everything that I do, so thank you for being amazing role models. And yeah. <laughs> Beautifully said, Georgie. Well done. And thank you very much to Colin and to Angie Carter. Can we have a round of applause for, for Colin and Angie? Uh, Georgie, I'm going to get you to stick around because you were the winner of last year's Hoops Award, which is uh, an award that is voted by the players, the staff uh, and coaches. It's uh, in line with the criteria of the Tom Harley Award. And uh, you were the winner of it last year. And the winner of it this year is Kate Darby. 50 will kick it to a dangerous position and what a pass in the end it was as Darby takes the mark. This team, oh, good tackle again, Darby. Darby, oh, good strong. Pick up, takes a bounce and then has a look at the goals. Does the team thing, looking to see. Games so far in 2022 and she's got the opening goal for Geelong at Metricon. She lock up, Daisy Walker didn't really Chance. want it. The mark taken by Darby. Front position. Fine shot on goal. It's got the accuracy. All right, so last year's winner, Georgie Rankin, would like to say a few words about Kate Darby and present it to her herself. So here is the award. Would you like to hand it over and uh, say whatever you like, really? I'm going to speak. Oh, do you want to hold it? I can just... No, I'm going to shake it. You're shaking. All right, I'll hold it first. Okay. Um, I did just want to say I'm so pumped and proud to be able to present this to you, Darbs. I think, um, as we've spoken about, it is voted by the staff, um, the support staff, the coaches and the players. So, you know, I know last year it's just such a massive privilege. It's a credit to you as a person. I think one of the ways that you're so relatable to us all is your journey. You've fought for your place on a list. You've fought for your place in the team week after week and this year you were rewarded after coming off having an amazing little girl, but week after week you were secured because of all the work that you've done. And I think that makes you so relatable to players across every stage of their development in our team to be able to bounce off you from your experiences. And probably the second most valuable um, asset to you is the way you value every single interaction you have with a person. So it's your undivided attention um, and you're so empathetic and have so much kindness and wisdom. I just know whether it's supporters, whether it's your teammates um, or any of the staff, we feel incredibly valued when we're in your presence. So very, very much deserving, Dubs. I was, uh, yeah, oh. 
I would probably have got makeup and hair done a bit better if I hadn't known I was going to be out there. I was at the park with Flitty yesterday with our two little one-year-old and almost one-year-old and we were talking about this award and we were talking about the best and fairest and who we thought were up there and, and she threw my name out for this and I was like, oh, no, 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 I reckon it'll be this person or this person. I'm like, but that's like so amazing. Imagine winning that award. And then, oh, wow. So obviously I wasn't prepared but the fact that I get to play with all these incredible people and be part of a program that is run by that incredible table, plus more, but that is a massive table for this program. I'm just so thankful every day. I've spoken to a few people just before coming in here tonight, and they were saying that, you know, we're, like, we're happy with your C's, and, and I just said that I was stoked because every game was a bonus, and I've just had so much fun. It's obviously so exciting to be here when I didn't think that I would be. Um, so thank you, Renee, as well. Um, but, yeah, no, just... It's an absolute honour to play with you girls, but to be with the, uh, to be able to receive this is just beyond expectations. So thank you so much for everyone. Well done, Kate. And um, a couple of things come to mind. First of all, Georgie, just calm down. You're trying to take my job. You're very, very good at the uh, MC role. I do need the pocket money, so just... Mm -hmm. And also, Kate... Um, for those who don't have kids, you'll realise the reason Kate comes in here and engages with people is because she gets to talk to adults when she comes in here <laughs> and she doesn't have to talk to a, a baby. So well done, Kate, for coming back from that. Uh, congratulations to Georgie and Kate. <clears throat> now, getting back to the best and fairest count, uh, we're going to have a look at the highlights now from rounds four to six, and then we'll update the leaderboard after we see these highlights. The Cats flew north to play the Lions in round four. Brisbane was relentless early with Geelong's back line holding the Lions at bay. The game threatened to get away when the Lions opened a 13 point lead, but Geelong's sheer determination, a trademark of the opening month, saw the Cats mount a comeback. Back-to-back -back goals to Chloe Shear in the last saw the Cats get within a kick. Geelong took the challenge right up to the reigning Premier, but fell two points short. Shear has three. It was a frantic finish in round five as the Cats hosted the Eagles at GMHBA Stadium. Webster got the Cats off to the perfect start. Press Parkus and McWilliams combined on the halftime siren to extend the Cats' lead. She can. Phoebe says thank you very much for that delivery, Georgie. Veteran, the goal kicker, a chance to make it a 10-point lead at halftime. And they're energised on the stroke of halftime. The Eagles mounted a second-half fight back, hitting the lead with less than two minutes remaining. But Maloney stole it late, the Cats winning it by a whisker. She set upon. Still a ball to be won here. Stolen by Maloney, who runs into an open goal. The Cats couldn't have scripted a better start with the Suns in round six with two goals in quick succession. Gold Coast responded with the next four majors before McWilliams created something out of nothing with a soccer finish to keep the Cats in the hunt. The Suns surged again and despite the best efforts of McMahon and Morrison, it was the slick Suns that proved too strong. All right, let's take a look at the leaderboard after round six. So a reminder that the maximum number of votes from any one game is 20. So fifth, Georgie Prasparkas. Fourth, Nina. Maddie. Becky. Amy. 69. So it's pretty close at the top among those top three. It's going to be a fascinating vote count uh, towards the end. A, little, a couple of housekeeping reminders. Uh, there is a raffle, of course, and we know that the money goes to a very good cause. So one for $10, three for 28 tickets for 50. And the prizes are an AFLW team signed Guernsey, an AFLW 2023 photo, $300 Saltair Day Spa voucher, and two 
2023 AFL home membership. So staff will come around uh, and look at those. There's also a silent auction. Shh, I know this is the bit where it's a bit boring and you want to talk to each other, but just, just hang on one second. It'll be very quick. There is a silent auction. So make sure you go out and check out in the foyer what is on offer because obviously all the money uh, is very, very much appreciated. There's a silent auction. There's a raffle. Please throw your money in. Uh, we're going to have a little break now to have some dessert and then we'll come back and look at rounds uh, 7 to 10. Thank you. Thank you very much. And so we're now up to rounds seven to ten. Now there won't be a vote count after this highlights package because that's when we'll know our winners. So for now, if you look up at your screens, we'll see the highlights from the last few rounds of the year and then the coach, Dan Lowther, will get up and announce our one, two and three. So please have a look at the screens and see the highlights from the last few rounds of the season. Round seven. The Cats brace for a challenge against a red-hot Western Bulldogs at Witten Oval in round seven. Goals were hard to come by for either team with the pressure high. Sheer created something out of nothing to spark the Cats in the final term. Off one step, what a finish. The power to swivel the hit. But the Dogs locked down to hold on for the win. Round eight. The Cats came ready to play when they took on Richmond at the Swinburne Centre in the AFLW Indigenous round. McWilliams gave the team a strong start. While the Cats produced their best quarter of the year in the second, kicking four straight goals. Position. Darcy hand past it. Hosting, she's under pressure now. Webster's stolen it. Got herself a free kick, it won't matter. She's kicked the goal anyway. Spot. Play is by ground level. I think they might have kicked it other. Underneath Crockett Grills. Hosking, which way will it bounce? It's going to bounce their way again into the arms of Maguire. In what was a strong effort across the board, Amy McDonald and Becky Webster saw plenty of the footy, while Liv Barber impressed in just her second game back. And they were able to protect their lead in the second half, notching up their second win for the season. The Cats took on a confidence in Kilda on a windy day in round nine. Geelong created opportunities but could not capitalise on them as the Saints brought the pressure. Young Cats Morrison and Gardner fought valiantly through the midfield. But despite fighting back hard in the second half, the Cats couldn't bridge the gap on the scoreboard. Patrons had barely had the chance to find their seats in round 10 before Webster got the Cats on the board. Webster quickly goes for goal. Will it get the bounce? It does. What a start. The Cats kicked three of the opening four goals against the Giants in an exciting display. While Amy McDonald and Press Parkus leading the way for the Cats, creating drive and bringing the pressure. But the Giants fought back as the tough contest ensued, with the visitors ultimately walking away with the win. Thanks to, uh, to Beck and everyone who put those highlights together. Let's have a round of applause for that because it's terrific to watch and you can see, 
you can see the improvement and how good was that to beat Richmond at Punt Road. That was very, very satisfying. Um, as I said, no leaderboard at the moment because we're going to introduce a man who has taken on a huge job and I'm sure you will all agree he's made massive strides, not only in winning a couple of games, but just with the way that he has uh, managed the AFLW program. Would you please welcome uh, up to the stage tonight, AFLW senior coach, Dan Lauder. Thank you, Nathan. Um, thanks, everybody, uh, and welcome to our, our count tonight. Uh, I feel like what I've got in front of me is, um, is a little bit empty after listening to Diane's great words just earlier on. Meg, outstanding, hard to, hard to top, very hard to top. And Brett as well, fantastic, mate. You've, all, uh, you've, you've stolen my thunder. So um, I, will, uh, I will get stuck into it. I'll, I'll try and stick to script. Um, but, uh, yeah, welcome, everybody, to, to tonight. Uh, so what were our goals for Season 6? Simple, to be competitive and combative and show consistency in our performance. I have no doubt we've delivered on these goals during this season. Season 6 saw us cut our average losing margin from 36 to just 10. Ranked top 5 for both hard ball gets, loose ball gets and contested marks. Ranked number 2 in the competition for tackles. Number 1 in the competition for long kicks. And number 14 in the competition for kick clangers, which is a very, very good start to have. That means you're not turning the ball over. My point is we've made significant improvements. In order to make these gains, some key initi initiatives were identified to put in place at the completion of last year. The first and the most important was to make football the number one priority. Strip back and simplify a style and method we could all call our own. Headlined by skill acquisition, improving fundamentals and gaining a better understanding of the game itself, a game we all love. Next was to establish a set of values which exemplify what this playing group stand for. Connected, grit, and consistency. The standards which underpin these values, values are in their infancy and in no doubt will, in time will prove pivotal, move, pivotal moving forward for this group. An important initiative was to identify a brand, our brand. An identity of our own which not only suits the strengths of our list, but when mastered will elevate our standings against the best in the AFL, W. Managing one extra win this season is a positive, and Brett's touched on that and the expectations around wins and losses. But our true measures of success are always centred around consistency. Consistency at training and in games in order to shift the outside perceptions that this team is simply content just to be AFLW players. That perception must change, and no more from this point on. This perception is shifting right before our eyes. As Diana and Brett have mentioned already, season six saw two rising star nominees in Georgia Bespakis and Darcy Maloney. Both Becky Webster and George Sparkus recognised in the AFLW 22 under 22 team. While Amy McDonald, Nina Morrison, Becky Webster and George Sparkus each polling votes in the recent AFLW awards. As again, very stiff Mads, you're in our uh, All Australian team. But to be named with Amy, your, your teammate, your great teammate, to be recognised by the AFLW for this, their consist your consistent performance, both being named in the squad, outstanding. Uh, we're all very proud of you. But the game is not an individual sport. It's about a willingness to sacrifice in order to win football games so that the entire team is recognised for their efforts, drive and desire to get the absolute best from each other. Right now, Adelaide Football Club are officially the best, not us. Therefore, respecting and living out standards are crucial to every member of, their, of this playing group in this room tonight. To conclude, I'd like to acknowledge both Brett Johnson and Ben Waller for their ongoing support and for allowing me to coach and lead such a magnificent football team. It's been a true honour and privilege, one that I hope can continue on for a long time. The coaching team, consisting of Jess Foley, Aaron Black, Josh Finch, Elise Coventry and David Morgan. I'd also like to give a big shout out to Renee Gehring for her stellar work on the bench this year and we wish you all the very best and can't wait to have you back in tip-top shape, which we all know you will be. Uh, a high-performance team which successfully managed a season where we had a full list of players to choose from, which is a truly remarkable effort. And they're just over there. Fantastic, you guys over there. Yep, round of applause. <laughs> to Robert, 
Roberto, our amazing AFLW staff who give up their time so that others can be, can be the best version of themselves. It doesn't go unnoticed, mate. We love it. To our captain and leader, Meg, I've enjoyed our daily discussions around the game we love so much and looking forward to seeing you grow in this space. I don't get much rest between you and Nina texting at, what time is it, Nines? 1.30 in the morning after a game just to see if I've watched the game or not. Yeah, we watched it. <laughs> looking forward to those conversations to continue. But Meg, your inspiration this year with your leadership and it will continue for a long time. To my wife, Tanya, who happily watched every re replay of our games this season multiple times and did it with a smile, so thank you. Uh, to Steve Hocking and the board of directors for not only their unwavering support of our AFLW program, but importantly, for being visible and present while doing so. <laughs> just a, I will go off script just very quickly, but um, when I was first appointed coach, uh, one of the first phone calls I got was from Steve just to say congratulations. And in no uncertain terms said, Things are changing. The culture at Geelong Football Club will continue to improve. And whatever you need for the AFLW program, just give me a call. And this is how it's continued on from this table here. So thank you so much. <laughs> and finally, to the players who continue to lead us on this pathway of change and who made my first year as an AFLW coach an enjoyable and rewarding experience. I wish you all the very best with your endeavours next season, which is right around the corner. And I'll finish up on one note. Change will not come if we wait for some other person for some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. Bring on season seven and go, Cats. Sorry, Dan. Um, you're actually going to stay up here and uh, introduce our winners in our top three. So, uh, would you like to take it back? Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. okay. So, uh, here's the top three in the best and fairest. Okay. I don't know the, uh, the actual number of votes, but I certainly know who, who came third in our uh, best and fairest. One thing that we went into uh, this season after extensive review last year was to make sure that we were stable in our defence. This player was a rock in our defensive half and as mentioned earlier on, should have been an All-Australian. So to Mads, McMahon, congratulations on being our third best and fairest in our AFW. Throws it on the football, crashing the pack. That was Gray from the Geelong defence. Still forward. To a contest, Sermon. Well done, Matty McMahon. Andrea's over the pre-season and looking good. The dogs will go inside 50, Hartwig in front. Well done, McMahon. Can they fight again? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I came third in my first year and I speak, spoke too long, so I'll keep it quick. Um, <laughs> um, okay, I just want to say a big thank you to the S&C staff. Um, thank you for trusting my body and allowing me to do go off the cuff because I'm a bit old. Um, so thank you. Um, thank you. I'm not going to get this in order and I'm not very prepared, sorry. But um, thank you to the coaching staff um, for the support. Thank you, Dan. Um, I don't give you 1.30 calls, definitely, but um, I just, in, um, you, you trust me and I appreciate that and you have my back, so thank you for, um, for that. Thank you to Jono for leading the way in this program um, and thank you to, to my teammates. Um, I'm inspired by you all and I, as Diana mentioned before about, um, you know, social media, the two, my two highlights was Julia going to work and coming to footy training and Darbs doing nine to five with a baby. So you're all inspirational, but you, you, you too. It shows just what we give up as female athletes at this point in time. So um, yeah, thank you. And quick shout out to Matt, my husband. Thank you for your support. He comes to games with three kids. He, he wants to watch, but he can't really. <laughs> but he watches replays with me. So thank you, you're amazing.
Not bad for no, no speech organised. Good job, mate. Uh, okay, so this brings us to our uh, second, uh, second place award winner. Um, speaking to Anula, actually, a little bit earlier on, uh, our illustrious running, one of our running coaches. Uh, this player, well, elevated her game this year to a, to a large degree, but comparing last year's ability to run uh, compared to this year, uh, this player is running, running uh, out, of, out of sight, which is outstanding to see. Power, athleticism, and just taking the competition by storm. So we're all looking forward to seeing what Becky Webster can do for us going forward. So Becky, congratulations on this award. Morrison now for Becky Webster. Throws it on the boot directly in front and it spins through for the opener. Webster's stolen it. Got herself free kick and won't matter. She's kicked the goal anyway. Thanks, everyone. Um, it's <laughs> I'm looking at you, Amac. <laughs> um, it's an honour to be up here and I'm very thankful for this award. I just want to firstly thank the coaches. You have driven me this year, especially Dan and Finchie. Um, your pressure on me to be better and be the best I can be is always rewarding and as much as it sucks sometimes when you're telling me, do better, um, <laughs> it does pay off in the end. So thank you for that. Um, big shout out to the girls. I love this club. I love being a part of it. As you all know, I fucking love this club. <laughs> and I love everyone in this room. <laughs> Um, it is the sport behind the club that makes um, AFLW keep elevating every year. So thanks to everyone behind the club as well. And go Cats! <laughs> thanks, Beck. Which brings us to our, our, our winner for our AFLW Season 6. Um, I do actually know that the, the votes were quite tight, but... Um, so Amy McDonald, uh, this will be your second uh, best and fairest for the Geelong Football Club in our AFRW team. <laughs> your desire to improve, your motivation to drive your teammates, your ability to listen to your teammates and coaches, um, to, to take those next steps, it's evident and clear to the accolades are going to continue to flow your way if you continue this path that you're on with the work and the standards. So to you, I, I wish you'd be congratulations. So come on up. Good job. First of all, what a privilege it is to stand up here with Mads and Becky. Um, you two are the absolute pillar of our team. You lead us out the front week in, week out, and you set the standard. So congratulations to the two of you. Um, to the Geelong Football Club, from everyone behind the scenes, um, thank you so much. You guys make this club and organi organisation absolutely incredible, and I don't think we've ever felt as supported as what we do now. Um, to our internal staffing group, I think there's more of you guys than there are us players, so I won't list you all, but thank you so much for the time and energy that you put towards us girls. You're there before we get there, you're there when we leave, um, and we wouldn't be able to run it out on the field each week if it wasn't for you guys. Um, Dan and Finchie, who I work a little bit closely with, thank you for believing in me and continuing to push me. Um, I would not be where I am today without the two of you, so thank you so much. Um, Mum and Dad, thank you so much for your support. Um, I have the most incredible parents in the world and no matter what decision I decide I'm going to do, which is half the time bloody stupid, um, they'll support me and, yeah, I wouldn't have got through this year so far without the two of you, so thank you so much. Um, and finally, to my teammates, what an incredible bunch of girls you guys are. Um, 
not only teammates but friends. Um, I'll carry so many friendships that I've met from you guys here um, for the rest of my life. So thank you so much for both being both on-field and off-field support. Um, and I can't wait to see where the future of Geelong Cats goes. Um, I think there's some really exciting things ahead, so thank you. All right, well, congratulations. Um, could we have a round of applause for Dan? Because I think you can tell by the way he speaks and also the way that his players uh, revere him that he's doing a fantastic job. So well done to Dan Lowther. Um, well done to Amy, Maddie and Becky fucking Webster. Uh, well done. Congratulations to our top three. Uh, can we just give them a round of applause as they uh, head off the stage? And I, I think it's also important to note, um, you know, Colin and Angie, but also Craig and Hock, um, for the way that they've embraced the women's program at this club. I think that it's the envy of a lot of other AFL clubs, the way that the, the men's and women's teams integrate. And uh, I think there's some very, very exciting times ahead. So uh, a round of applause again for, for the coach and for the top three in the best in Paris. Well done. Now, uh, we've also got to do the raffle. Would anyone like to come up and draw the raffle? It's a bit... Who wants to do it? Come on. Someone? Anyone? Yep. Come on. Come on up. All right. Here we go. Now. Oh, they sound disappointed. Come on, guys. Okay. So, uh, four... Okay, let's do fourth prize first. It is two 2023 AFLW home memberships. So, please, draw it out. Tell us the number. 09308. <laughs> 09308, is that right? Yeah. Well done. Okay, well done. Okay, let's, let's go on to third prize. It's a $300 Salt Air Day Spa voucher, thanks to our uh, partner, Blue Rock. Could you please uh, draw another one? $300 Day Spa voucher. 09660. 09660. Anyone? Anyone? Come on. All right. Congratulations. Come on up with your number. All right, second prize, AFLW 2023. Maybe it's meant to be 2022. Anyway, 2023 team photo. <laughs> Here we go. 09322. 09322. 09. Here we go. Come on up. All right, our number one prize, AFLW team signed Guernsey. The number is? 09305. 09305. Anyone? Three. Angie! <laughs> and anyway, uh, Angie has kindly donated that Guernsey straight back to the club. And uh, if anyone would like to buy it for $10,000, that would be wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for coming along tonight. It's been a, a terrific evening, and as I'm sure you'll agree, the AFLW team has a lot to celebrate and be proud of this year, and perhaps even more importantly, so much to look forward to with the support of the entire club. So well done to all of the administration, the coaching staff, and most importantly, the players. Well done on a terrific season. We can't wait to see what you do next season. Go Cats. Thank you. And I believe the bar's open till 10, so you've got 36 Blue minutes. White. Enjoy yourself. Carved into history books and written on walls. Greatness in all its forms. Playing for community. 
City, Legacy, Hoops. Tradition and ambition. Passion and hunger. Energy and heart. Change makers. Chance takers. History breakers. Built from the failures and the triumphs. The setbacks and the comebacks. Her power, her commitment, her way, her game. She is football. We are football. They are football. I am football. She's not afraid of greatness. Greatness in all its forms.